What is going on guys? In this video, I want to look at this article by Sebastian Rashka. I probably butchered that pronunciation 100%, but Sebastian, I'll link this in the description. Um, but the title is no, we don't have to choose batch sizes as powers of two. So, I mean, you're probably familiar when we choose batch sizes as a hyperparameter to our neural network. Usually kind of we look at how much VRAM do we have and we try to fill that up as much as possible. Uh, and we do that by choosing, you know, batch sizes that are uh, 64, 128, or even smaller than that, you know, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc., cetera, um, being powers of two. And we choose kind of, you know, we try 64 and then, all right, that fits into VRAM. This is how I usually do it anyways. 64 fits into VRAM, 128, that doesn't fit. All right, then we default to 64 because that's the maximum as a power of two that we can fit to our, our GPU. Um, but, you know, maybe I could have, maybe it's possible to try something in between and that would still work. Maybe 100 would still work. So the question is, you know, how important is it to have uh, powers of two? So he mentions here, you know, we do this out of habit and because it's a standard convention, um, and the justifications, you know, let's go to the main idea and the theory behind it. Uh, the first one is the memory alignment. So uh, I'm no expert in this, but, you know, GPU memory is uh, the arc, sort of the memory page is a power of two so that if we choose a batch size that is a power of two, it can fit on a consecutive block is the intuition. So, uh, you know, here he, he, gets you know, it gives uh, shows on the mac you can get the um i don't know what that is exactly but the page size which is a power of two so that's sort of the general idea which is that you know we can choose a power we need a power of two because of this memory alignment uh, but then there's a second argument which is this uh, ma uh matrix multiplication so if we take a look at uh let's see here if we take a look at uh, NVIDIA sort of deep learning performance documentation, we can see here that they, for mixed precision, uh, they want us to have matrix dimensions that are multiples of eight. Uh, and that's sort of the most efficient way to uh, do computation on NVIDIA GPUs. So, uh, and of course, you know, there, there's an overlap of, so we want batch size of two for memory, uh, memory allocation memory alignment, sorry. And then we need batch, uh, batch size, which is a multi multiple of eight for matrix multiplication. So then we can, you know, we can choose an intersection of those. Um, and yeah, I mean, basically he's just trying to explain here why multiples of eight um, and yeah, I don't know if, there, if this is really an explanation of why we want to have multiples of eight um uh, it i guess i actually don't know why multiples of eight would be optimal and i don't think he actually explains it here uh to be honest but anyways uh wh what we can control so basically we have you know when we do this matrix multiplication we have batch size and then we have these matrix operations that we're trying to do in, in parallel and so uh, we're trying to do, I guess, N here. Let's see, N is, yeah, so K and N basically are the sort of the matrices determined by the neural, the neural ar network architecture that we're having. And then M is the batch size. So since K and N is not, we're not having influence over that usually depending on the architecture, uh, but we do have influence over M, which is the, the batch size. So we can choose batch sizes of multiples of eight, basically to optimize this um, matrix operation um, efficiency. So how does that actually, you know, pan out in practice um, when he did benchmarks? So I guess it's important to mention here, he, uh, he used a ComNet uh, and then he ran it for 10 epochs uh, <clears throat> and um, on a V100 card on mixed precision. So. I guess one thing here is that, you know, we want to maybe see how would it, this is kind of a very specific experiment. Maybe you would want to have, maybe it differs, differs a little bit on the architecture maybe. Uh, so if you use transformers or 
something else. Uh, maybe it's different. I'm not sure actually. But from this benchmark, uh, he's using a convolution. And uh, what we can see here anyways is that if we look at, I guess these three are the important ones. So we can see a batch size of 127, uh, which is one less than ideal, uh, theoretically, and then one above uh, 129. So we can see here that there it actually is like negligible difference. Uh, it, it's a little bit faster if you run on 128 slightly, but it's not, I mean, it's not something that is significant enough that you should actually take this into consideration kind of. And that's what he kind of mentions here is that it doesn't really matter. And then here that uh, batch size 100 is a lot slower than batch size 156. I mean, that's because more batches are being processed. And so that's likely the case. Uh, if he did, if he looks at instead the max batch size benchmark for the maximum that he can fit on the GPU, uh, we again see that the difference is negligible. So based on that experiment, which is, I would say, a very specific experiment, uh, it doesn't seem that you need to have batch size as a power of two uh, or a multiple, you know, or a multiple of eight. That doesn't really make a difference. And for multiple GPU training, uh, he also he also runs that experiment and says that, or notices that uh, it doesn't really matter in that case either. So um, yeah, he has some caveats, I guess uh, he mentions here. Uh, I only ran each setting once. Ideally you would want to run it multiple times and report the average and standard deviation. I don't think that would matter too much, but maybe that's one thing you can always do. Um, and yeah, he ran them in consecutive order without long waiting times. I don't think that matters either, to be honest. Uh, one other thing, this is something that I thought was interesting though, which is that he mentioned here is that this is with GPUs, maybe for TPUs, you know, uh, TPUs, it does actually matter. I've, I don't have any experience working with TPUs, but that's an interesting thing to add that, you know, maybe you really want batch sizes as a power of two for, for TPUs. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, what's the sort of the conclusion? Let's see here. So, so here, sort of the, the reason why you would use batch size power of two, I think is because it's, again, it's standard convention. So he mentions here that um, choosing batch size as power of two will make your results in academic research papers more look less like cherry picking. Um, so that was just an interesting idea really to get a sense and challenge the idea. Um, I don't know, do you think his conclusion is correct? Do you think it's sufficient to draw this conclusion based on the experiment he did? Uh, is there something missing, do you think? And also, uh, do you use powers of two? There's, do you think there's a reason to use it or is it better to just, yeah. Basically my question is how do you choose your batch size but all right, that was it for this video. Let me know what you think and uh, see you in the next one.